Tonight I'm going to talk about uh, some aspects of climate change and quick outline of the presentation tonight. We'll talk just briefly about what climate change is and not delve too deeply into the science of it. Talk about the climate in the past, the present, and the future. Look at some projections of possible climate change, specifically in the Blaze Bay area that will help you understand the potential impacts of what we can do about it. And then look at some of the specific impacts. And uh, the subsequent presentation we'll get into more detail, but I do want to say some words about sea level rise and coastal erosion in particular, ice and winter storms, and then quickly go over some of the other impacts. And then finally, we'll talk about the concept of adaptation to climate change, which is really at the crux of this whole project. It's a really important concept to understand in terms of what it is and how we do it, why it's important. And I'll mention a few examples of adaptation and talk a little bit about how you choose priorities because as Daniel said we don't have the resources to adapt every possible impact so that's why we do community-based adaptation plans we try to help the communities to choose for themselves what are the important issues to adapt to so as I said I was going to tell you about climate change and we could have a really really long detailed boring lecture on the science of climate change but Given that it's well into the evening, we don't want to be here till midnight. I'm going to go for the, the very, very simple explanation. <laughs> and hopefully this, uh, this sums things up for you. <laughs> and you notice we didn't put 2,000 on the graph. That would be a <laughs> <laughs> There wouldn't be any point. Anyway. So what is climate change? Very, very simply, it's a change in the long-term average weather that any place experiences. It's driven by both natural and man-made forces, and we tend to lose sight of this in terms of the way the media presents it. Climate change is a natural process. It's being, this climate has been changing for as long as we've had a climate, and it's only in recent decades that we've been quite concerned about the fact that human input into the climate system via greenhouse gases emissions is actually speeding up climate change. And that's, that's the, why we're really concerned about it. It's not so much the fact that climate is changing, it's the fact that it's changing faster and faster and we have to start to prepare for those changes. It's a heavily studied issue. There's been a lot of really good science that's gone into this. The first item on this this is the IPCC's fourth assessment that was released in 2007. You may recall that as the big document that shared the Nobel Peace Prize with Al Gore that year. And not coincidentally, Natural Resources Canada released what they called in, in very short terms their National Adaptation Assessment. It had a much longer name, and we can certainly get to the, the actual title of that if you're interested. That was a cross-Canada study looking at how climate change is expected to impact the country. There's a whole chapter on Atlantic Canada that talks about a lot of the issues that we'll talk about here tonight, but in much greater detail. And finally, this, are, this is a really important issue for planning for the future. A lot of planning up to now has been predicated on the assumption that things are going to stay the same, that if the way that things have worked for the last hundred years, climate-wise, is what they'll be for the next hundred. But we know that's not the case. So if you're planning your community, you're putting in infrastructure, deciding whether a new subdivision should go close to the shore or farther back from the shore, you really need to understand how the climate could change and what impacts that will have on the natural environment. So I said that the climate has always been changing. This is a graph of historical data, weather data, the average temperature going back to 1895, uh, which is about the time when we started recording good, reliable temperature records. It's an average of Yarmouth and Sydney, the two ends of the province, which gives you a reasonable average for the whole province. You can see that, indeed, there is a statistically significant trend of about a half a degree increase in temperature over that period. And that may not sound like a lot, half a degree over 100 years. Well, we've been able to deal with that up till now. It's when we start looking into the future that we really start to be concerned about how temperature may increase. So 
So using computer models, some projections were generated for the future. And this is some work that was done for Parks Canada, looking at how temperature changes with climate change might be in the year 2090, or some point toward the end of this century. And essentially, if you look at the scale here, this is approximately the number of degrees above today's temperature that we expect that the Atlantic region will have. And it's broken down into four seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer. So one of the first messages you get is the increase is not going to be the same in every season. You can see that the temperature increases over what we would consider to be normal are going to be much more dramatic in the winter than, say, the fall or even the summer. So that's one of the messages of climate change. There's going to be a lot more temperature increase in the winter than the summer. So the difference between winter and summer will be a lot less, <coughs> even though the whole average is going to be more. The other important message you should get from this is it's not going to be an even uniform increase over the entire region. What you'll see, particularly you can see it in the winter slide, is the greatest increase is going to be inland, away from the ocean, and the least increase will be closest to the ocean. The reason for that is, living on the ocean, you know that the ocean modifies climate. The ocean that takes a lot longer to take up heat from the atmosphere than does the land. So being closer to the ocean, we won't experience as quick or as great an increase as areas in that. Now, based on those temperature models, some modeling of precipitation trends is going, has been undertaken as well. Now, there's a lot more uncertainty associated with the precipitation models because you've got the precipitation model running on top of the temperature model, so you've got a much greater degree, much more uncertainty in the modeling process. Regardless, we can see a few important messages. Again, the increases, overall, there's going to be a slight increase in precipitation in this region. The other message is it will vary from season to season, a bit more in the winter than, say, the fall, and also spatially varied. The other important thing to consider is that we may, even though in the future we may be getting a bit more precipitation, if you combine increased precipitation with increased temperature, you get increased evaporation. So this may not mean that the lakes and rivers are every bit as wet and well recharged as they are now. Not as much water may get into the, into the hydrologic system, it may evaporate just as quickly as it comes down. So we're fortunate in this area in that there's the Sydney Airport is just up the road here, and that has a good long climate data record. And from that climate data record, uh, some projections into the future can be made. Uh, Environment Canada used a technique called statistical downscaling, where they apply a local climate data set, in this case the Sydney Airport, to the global climate models and use statistical techniques to get new numbers that are very specific for a particular location. Now, I have to caution you that this is just one of many, many models. This is one possible future. This is not the definitive picture of how maximum temperature will look in the future. But it gives you an idea of the kind of changes that are possible. And to look at this table, it's broken down in the first column by the four seasons, and then it's averaged out for the whole year on the bottom. And then the four columns, we have the, the first one is the historical 